It's time for Twig this week at Google. Gina Trapani's here with Danny Sullivan of Search Engine Land, Mitch Wagner as well. We're going to talk about Eric Schmidt moving upstairs and maybe out. We'll talk about Google and its own Groupon effort and a whole lot more. This Week in Google, coming up next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for This Week in Google is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. This is Twig, This Week in Google, Episode 79, recorded January 26th, 2011. Hot honeycomb action. This Week in Google is brought to you by Ford. Introducing the all-new 2012 Ford Focus Electric with voice-activated sync and My Ford Touch, featuring gas-free power, zero CO2 emissions, and battery management technology that lets you go the distance. Learn more at FocusElectricPower.com. And by Hover.com. Hover is domain name registration and management that's simple. For 10% off your new domain, go to twig.hover.com. It's time for Twig this week in Google and the cloud. And starting our cloud-like podcast today, it's Gina Trapani from SmarterWare.org. Hi, Gina. Oh, I've had espresso. Uh-oh. I'm going to talk fast. Uh-oh, she's in trouble. Faster than usual. Faster than Uh-oh. usual. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, no. Gina, Android, Android. Gina, uh, Jeff's not here this week. It's so sad. I we know. miss Jeff a lot. He's in Switzerland. Yeah, you know, he's... Yeah. he's, he's I'm sure there's a chocolate fountain and he's, you know, convincing <laughs> with important people. You know, I get it. I get it. Chocolate, Next week. chocolate and cheese fountain, probably. <laughs> there's right. definitely fondue involved, yeah, you know. Definitely. There's got to be. But we got some good replacements starting with uh, Danny Sullivan is here from, uh, now it's searchengineland.com now, right? That's right. So we want everybody to go searchengineland.com and not the other one. Excellent. Not, not that the other, other one. Place. Not the other place. Danny, Can't even remember the name. Danny spends a lot of time covering <laughs> this. We were talking about preparing for the show ahead of time. And we said, Danny, you're the one person who doesn't really have to. This is your life. I'm, I'm ready to go. This is exciting. I'm like, oh, I could talk about that. I could talk I know about that. that. I know that story. I yeah. know what's going on there. I hope. We'll yeah. see. <laughs> also uh, joining us right now, uh, we've been trying to get him on for some time, a good friend of uh, Gina's, uh, Mitch Wagner, also a San Hello. Diegan. Hey, Mitch. Hey, Glad to make it this time. I got the day right. <laughs> and you're with, what is the CMO site? Tell us about that. The, the CMO site, it's an a online community and group blog for CMOs and high-level marketing executives at large companies. Where the marketing elite meet. Yes, they do. Yes. These... Trying to work feet into there, too. It just seems like <laughs> meet to beat their feet. <laughs> it's very Sinatra. So there's, yes. a, you know, in that in the Sinatra at the uh, Sands, 1965, he he tries to make a joke, and I've listened to this album a thousand times because one of the great albums of all time, one of the great Sinatra albums of all time. But he says, uh, "Welcome to uh, oh uh, somewhere," and he says, "Where the elite meet to eat." And if I rhyme that, we're out of business. And I'm trying to figure out what the heck rhyme <laughs> could put them out. Of, I don't understand. Anyway, everybody listen to that and send me emails. Explain it all. Maybe he was talking about Twitter, like if you tweet. <laughs> if he you was tweet, 40 years ahead of his 40, time. Yeah, it was. It was 1965. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. This is not the show about Frank Sinatra. This is the show about Google and the cloud, and there are lots of things to talk about. It's too bad Jeff's not here because Jeff uh, in the past and Jay Rosen and others have spent a lot of time talking about and explaining to me what demand media is. Um, demand media went public today, an initial public offering in the stock market. It, uh, it uh, valued its shares before the IPO at $17. It went immediately to $25. Now it's fallen a little bit, about $23 a share. Danny, what is this demand media? What is this? Should I buy stock? Hmm. <laughs> Maybe this morning. <laughs> yeah, it's too late now. You know, I mean, it's really hard to say. It's a, um, in some ways, this is, you know, the first huge, biggest, SEO driven company we've ever seen. They they have taken the idea of, of search engine optimization to its, you know, 
perhaps ultimate end where they are literally creating content based on what it is that they can see people are searching for and and targeting areas that they think are most valuable what they can sell advertising against and it's actually very smart and and really shouldn't be controversial at all either i mean if you think of all the self-help books out there or all the shows that are designed to give you practical advice if somebody's got questions and somebody else is giving them authoritative answers, you wouldn't have a problem with that. Uh, where the controversy comes in is that a lot of these answers sometimes don't seem to be that great. I'm not saying all of them aren't great and they do have good content. They do answer questions, but sometimes you can encounter um, the same answer answered multiple times, sometimes in low quality, sometimes not really an answer. And then they also can get lumped in with other content for farm kind of sites where you don't get answers at all. You know, you search for something using a question, uh, uh, you're searching the form of a question and you just end up with a lot of garbage and kind of getting a run around. Um, so I, you know, I, don't know if, I, you know, I don't know if that's the future or not. Um, I tend to think one of the problems with a company like that is that anytime someone gets really big on Google's radar, um, it's a danger sign. You become very dependent on that. And one of their biggest you know, drivers of traffic is coming from Google. So, so um, Google as, can put them out of business. Oh, yeah. By changing its algorithms or somehow. Google, Google could do that overnight. And, and I, ironically hurt itself along the way because a lot of, um, you know, a lot of demand media's money comes from the AdSense units that uh, they carry from Google itself. Um, so, so maybe the stock market's figuring, well, Google's never going to do that. It's uh, Yeah, and they, they could do that. They might have seen why would Google shoot itself in the foot. Right. But, you know, while, while AdSense revenue is a big deal to demand media, demand media's AdSense revenue I don't think is anything but a drop in the bucket to Google overall. More important, the, the, the teams at Google that are in charge of search quality literally do not care what AdWords has to think. Um, they, just, they just don't. It, it's like a reporter in the New York Times newsroom, and you can imagine that if some advertiser comes running in saying, hey, you're doing this thing on some big company, and, and we don't like it, they're going to pull all their ads. And you know, reporter will dig in and be like, well, too bad. And, and that's the kind of, I don't want to say rivalry, but that's the kind of division that you, you really do have at Google, and I've seen that sort of thing. So, It's not like they're a big moneymaker. They, they, they went off at a higher price... And they sold more shares than the, the market would expect. In the prospectus, they say uh, they, they uh, lost $3 million on $179 million in revenue for the first nine months of 2010. They didn't have fourth quarter numbers, but they estimated fourth quarter revenue, $71 to $73 million with a net loss of $1.9 million. They're not even profitable. Uh, and yet, Wall Street uh, rewarded them and said, hey, we want more. Is that bubbles course, back, baby? <laughs> yeah. Well, there haven't been a you know part. It could just re, could be actually that there haven't. This is the first tech stock IPO of 2011. There weren't Nobody very many that. last year. They were all Chinese mostly. Nobody could buy any of that Facebook stock that's not even <laughs> being sold publicly anyway. So, <laughs> so it could just be a thirst for uh, any technology uh, company. Now, Matt Cutts responded to to this. Um, why? First of all, uh, why would Google? not like demand media we know why they might like them why would they not like is it do they pollute search results i think google doesn't like the idea of anybody building a business on its own back which can sometimes be but that's what everybody does i know you can't google me i don't have a business either when you when you have a company like demand going out and saying we generate all this stuff at Google, there's an implication or a suggestion in there that they know how to manipulate Google and they can just make it happen. And you can imagine that is not going to go over well with people at Google who feel like, no, you're not manipulating us. We have our own independent algorithm and maybe you're successful in some regards, but you won't be successful in others. But nobody manipulates us, right? That, that would be their view. And so I think that would be the first thing that would cause... You know, some people at Google to be uncomfortable about demand. Is, I think, is demand media, media gaming Google? I mean, is there a case for that? Um, I've not seen anybody put forward any evidence that they've been violating Google's guidelines. No, they're doing. They're just using this, yeah. the system as as it's configured to their right. benefit. And well, one of the advantages they have is that their domains are powerful. You know, eHow carries some respect. eHow is is eHow owned by Demand Media? It's one of their. Okay. It's, yeah, it's one of their. Um, 
their properties. I think it's still their main property. Now, where about, they about com, which is similar, is not. It's owned by the New York Times. Right. In fact, exactly. this made this made this interesting. But it made media more valuable, at least via its stock price, uh, the higher valuation than the New York Times. I know. And now a story is coming out. The New York Times, in fact, tried to buy Demand Media to merge it with About dot com. So even old media sees the value of Demand Media. Which is funny because a year ago you had New York Times and a lot of newspapers saying that they couldn't make money off of search engines and they had to put up a paywall. And in fact, the New York Times is about literally about to do that, right? Well, that's why they want to buy these guys. Hey, they figured it out. But Demand Media yeah. doesn't have a paywall. They just do it the advertising. So, you know, nope, they're just no very, very smart. And, you know, one thing that I think we talked about last time we talked about demand is that any good blog or web publisher watches the ways in which visitors reach the site. We did this at Lifehacker the whole time. I mean, it wasn't, I mean, it's pretty much exactly what demand's doing. They're looking, what are people searching for? What information do they need? We're going to find it. We're going to package it in a way that maybe is more useful than the, than the, the, the list of links that you get on a topic now. In fact, and so, sometimes it feels like old media judgmentalism uh, that, oh, well, this is an upstart, an internet upstart. Right. This idea that they're gaming Google. I mean, I, you know, I think the same way you could put, well, that they're servicing their visitors, you know, they're serving readers. I mean, uh, you know, you can look at it either way. And certainly some, some of the articles from some of the demand properties are kind of crappy, but not all of them are. I mean, you know, really, it really depends. They're kind of, I find the articles there to be kind of mediocre at best. Um, we were joking before the show started that I was looking up how to do a hard reset on the iPhone. And one of the things that came up on these content form was 350 words on turn it off and turn it back on again. All right. But I'm going to put my, uh, I'm going to put my, uh, uh, hat on as Mr. Demand Media. I don't know who he is, but so I'm Mr. <laughs> Demand Media. Look, I don't care. I mean, you, that's old media. That's old school saying, who are you to judge the value of my articles? At least people come to them and click on them and read them. In the immortal words of Captain Kirk, who do I have to be? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, just a guy, I'm just a guy at 10 o'clock at night who's trying to remember how to do a hard reset on his iPhone, and I'm not doing on that site. This happens all the time. So your contention, Mitch Wagner, is that it pollutes, uh, the content is low-grade pollution, essentially. I found that if you're looking up, my, my thermal, I haven't done the study on this like Danny, Danny has, but I found if you're looking up either health information or you're looking up Mac and Apple related information, which is two things I do a lot. You know, the first page or two is garbage. Um, it's just all word of mouth and people asking questions and a lot of these content mm -hmm. forms. We've, we've, um, th we've gone through this with uh, Google before uh, where you had a, a lot of um, uh, uh, link farms. And, uh, and it, for a while, about, I can't remember, two or three years ago, Google was just crap. And then they fixed it. Yeah. Yep. And now I've seen there's a kind of a growing drumbeat from a lot of people saying uh, Google's search results are getting less and less useful. Are you hearing that, Danny? Oh, yeah. And, and in fact, it's even accelerated over the past six weeks. Um, we had a TechCrunch piece that kicked off the latest round at the beginning of the year. Um, that was followed up by two or three different pieces that came off after that where people were saying, you know, the, the, the results are crappy. The results aren't as useful as anymore. They're just, they're being dominated by all this stuff. Um, I don't know that that's actually true, but I do know more and more people are talking about it. Um, I did an article that looked at one study of a, a consumer poll that found that, you know, it was like 90% of the people surveyed still said search engines overall are useful. And I still find what I'm looking for. But the same survey found that like 70% said the biggest problem wasn't that they couldn't find what they were looking for, but that there was a lot of noise. So I think there's a perception that there's much more noise here. Um, and well, I even, think even Google thinks so. I'm, uh, I'm looking oh, at a, yeah. a blog post from uh, our, our friend Matt Cutts, who's been on the show a number of times, who is a Google engineer in charge of, in fact, uh, ki killing spam on the web results. And he wrote a couple of days ago, January brought a spate of stories about Google's search quality. Right, and he and he linked uh, Jeff Atwood's coding horror, TechCrunch, and Read Write Web uh, in that spate of stories phrase, which I, I loved. He says Google search quality is better than it has ever been in terms of relevance, freshness, and comprehensiveness. I I mean, what, what is there an objective measure of that? I guess he I guess he says there is. Well, that's one of the things that that I covered in the story that, hey, Matt, you didn't even link to it. Um, yeah, let's I've see been, those evaluation <laughs> metrics. <laughs> but, but where, I, where I've been talking about, and I actually wrote a piece way back in 2002 called um, In Search of the Relevancy Figure. And what I was saying was that you, you, you want people to, 
people want to be able to say this search engine is better than that and be able to quantify it. But we've never had that because the relevancy of search results is so subjective. So instead, this is we the so-called get... authority metric. Well, authority or just are they relevant or not? Right. You get these proxies. We've had people say, well. You know, Google must be better than Bing or being better than Google because one has more pages than the other. Well, that doesn't tell you anything. Or that one's fresher than the other. That doesn't mean that they're necessarily more relevant. We, we literally do not have a commonly accepted standard of rating the search engines to know whether or not they are better than each other or worse and whether they've gotten better or worse over time in terms of the quality of their results. The, internally, they will tell you that they do their own testing. But that's their own measure, and it's not something that the external, you know, people externally necessarily are going to agree with. Um, and surprise, usually in the years I've been watching the search engines, their internal metrics tell them that they're pretty good. Right. Um, so, you know, what I'd hope is that Google, Bing especially, would get together, find some third party to figure out a way to go through and test whether or not they are more spammy or they are less relevant or if things are improving. And I don't think Google's had the incentive to do that before because everybody just accepted that they were the best. But now it's been a turnabout where everybody right. thinks that they were the best. Right. More people seem to be more inclined to say, oh yeah, I do think that they're worse, even if they aren't necessarily worse or worse than some of the other search engines. There's at least some competition. I mean, you can at least say, well, you know, let's look at Bing and see how it's doing. But isn't it ultimately, let me ask you this, Mitch, isn't it ultimately you said, you know, you didn't like the results, but isn't that ultimately subjective? Uh, is there an objective measure of relevancy? Isn't one man's garbage another man's, you know, uh, treasure? Well, I don't, I don't know if you're looking for specific information, like how to do something. Uh, I don't think But some people much... need to know. You turn it off and on. Maybe they need to know that. Maybe you're, maybe you're an elitist. Press <laughs> the button. It's off. Press the button. <laughs> it's on. How hard is that? I mean... I think one site, by the way, I wanted to bring up that I think does a really good job on this kind of content farming and does content farming ethically is Lifehacker. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Because I don't, I don't really read Lifehacker anymore, but when I have a question on how to do something, if I type it into Google Go right and I see there. a Lifehacker link up by the top, I'm like, yep. that's it. That's yep. going to be good. I mean, I, I, I loathe to use the, the word content farm and life hacker in the same sentence. <laughs> but, I mean, that, that makes me, that makes my skin crawl a little bit, I'll admit, because quotes, there's something sort of, con you know, that, that there's a negative light right there. But, but the reality is that life hacker has some of the best Google, you know, SEO of all the Gawker sites, which is a huge network of sites. And a lot of that is just because our headlines are generally how to do X, you know, and it's at which people, that's what people search for. People search for how to use eHow, figured that out a long time ago. Um, life hackers headlines are very literal they're often just very step by steps and so they so yeah they get they get a lot of traffic and um the life hacker editors watch the comments and watch the um the keywords that bring people in and watch the emails that come in so we very very much the, the articles that you see on the site come from direct requests from readers so they come up in, in search results i i search for phrases and i find <laughs> life hacker articles that i wrote in like Oh seven come up. <laughs> I knew that. I forgot. I, I knew forgot, that. Yeah, yeah, I forgot. I knew that. I forget. So, so yes. Yeah, so, I mean, I think you know this calling it a content farm or calling it a, you know a site with with good content and high SEO for good good reason. That's that's there. There's a, a continuum there. It's really hard to say what it is. So so good content is not like porn, or is it? I'll know it when I see it. <laughs> yeah, I think it is like porn. So you, you, there's there we can all we could all I think you're right I think if the four of us sat down and I fired up four pages, we could pretty quickly say which are the good ones and which aren't right. Yeah, I yeah, think I so. Think Would we part? judge some of it by the number of ads on the page? Well, if there's an ad covering the entire page before I look at the yeah. article, then that's gonna that's gonna rate on it a downer. <laughs> well, I gotta mention there's quite a few prestigious websites that do that. In fact, almost all of the tech <laughs> sites now do that. I hate it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Yeah. Um, on most of the mainstream news sites now, you put the big it says page. This is really disingenuous. Page loading. <laughs> but watch this ad right, for 15, 14, 14 13, 12, and then and then skip this ad. It's like, well, if you're going to put an ad up, why put a skip this ad link? Make me watch it. I don't understand. 
What I would like to see, and I've actually seen this, I visited a, a company that competes with Google, which I can't name, but internally who has been developing a search engine, and internally they had a simple web app with Google on one side and their product on the other. They would search, and then they would submit the results if they felt like Google got it better. So all oh. we need, this is a very simple web app that just lines up Google against the other search engines. You search for a term, and then you report, you know, you, you report something to a sort of some sort of third party or, you know, I don't know, the creator of the app to say, this is a search in which Google's results were, were terrible and this one was better or whatever. And that would be pretty cool crowdsourced way and public way, transparent way to say, the, you know, the re results on Google are better in these cases and worse in those cases. Matt Cutts says, as pure web sca uh, scam, spam has decreased <laughs> over time, in other words, just, you know, junk, attention has shifted instead to, quote, content farms, which are sites with shallow or low quality content. Sounds like demand media, right? In 2010, we launched two major algorithmic changes focusing on low-quality sites. So they are, they say, doing something about it. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it reminds well, me of when, uh, well, when spyware started to come out, and the antivirus companies were very reluctant to battle spyware because they didn't want to get sued because spyware or adware was, you know, just an ad. It wasn't, it wasn't malware. That's changed, I think, over time. But it does remind me of that. Is couldn't I mean? It, how isn't it very judgmental to say that's low quality? No. <laughs> but then, you, and then is it, okay, is it I'll, give you, I'll give you an example of where it comes up. Um, I um, <laughs> so I got I've got two boys, and um, they're both in elementary school, and they are making fun of Justin Bieber once. And I've used this example before, but um, I said to him, "Well, you know, you might make fun of him, but." <laughs> He seemed to be pretty successful. And they said, oh, no, no, he's not successful. You know, he's probably not made any money at all. <laughs> I was like, well, <laughs> he's probably done a little better than you guys. So we went back and we, we went to do a search. And bearing in mind, like, I'm, you know, a search expert, right? You know, this is what I do is find information online. So we go off and I start doing some searches just to find out, well, how much money has Justin Bieber made? And you start doing that search and what you do is encounter time and time again answer sites, Yahoo Answers, Answers.com, oh my God, um, Cha Cha, you know, Wiki Answers, Answers This, da 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 And none of them have the answer. None of them have the answer. They have people guessing at an answer. They have people pretending that they know the answer. Sometimes they have answers that have nothing to do with it. Yeah, okay, that would to be me, bad. <laughs> to me, that is shallow or yeah. low-quality content. Right. And they're doing well because more and more people seem to be comfortable and performing searches in the form of a question. Relatively few other websites on the internet actually write content in the form of questions, right? They don't tend to do the SEO like what Gina was talking about, what you think, well, gosh, someone's going to sit down, they're typing in, how do I, this sort of thing. So their competition space is lower and they have these authoritative domains. And I think that's what, you know, Matt and Google are saying that they're grappling with. Some of these things sometimes do have the answers. They do have good quality information, and some of them just don't. And should we get rid of them? And is there and, and most important, because they're there, are they blocking the real answers from actually being found? Right. I wonder to what extent um, people, the, the general run of searching public, will have to will find out. I mean, I think it took most most of us watch it more closely, and it took us a few months to realize eh, if it's an e how. Link, I just don't want to click it. Um, <laughs> so I'm should, getting... the, I guess the question is, should Google put it in the results then or rank it so highly then? Ooh, then that gets into the question of do they start blocking specific domains, which they have been extremely <laughs> reluctant to do. Can't you say don't ever show me eHow again? If you log you in, yeah, right? You used to be able to do that through Search Wiki. Oh. And I think they may still have that, oh. but it was on a page-by-page -page basis. And in fact, mm -hmm. after Matt's post came out, he did another follow-up thing. Um, this was out on Hacker News, and we did a short piece on it at Search Engine Land where he was saying, we might come back and give you the option to block whole domains. Yahoo actually had something like that as well, and I can't remember exactly what it was called at this point. But you could say, I just don't want to see anything else from this domain. And of well, course, that would solve though, the problem, right? Because then I'm judging I don't like the domain, and I could block it. I mean, you can always do minus site colon yeah, ehow.com, but, but you're not, but you're not, it's too much trouble, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I can't remember if Blacko has a slash tag. Blacko says that they have certain slash tags over there that are designed to keep um, 
content farms out and other lower quality content. But I can't remember if they created a slash tag that if you use it automatically drops out the most common Q&A sites. That would be interesting. Who's that? Uh, uh, Blacko. So spell it. B-L-E-K-K-O. Oh. Blacko. Blacko. <laughs> yeah, we actually, we haven't talked I, about Blacko on the show. Yeah, we talked about it when it first came out. That's the one where you do the slash uh, tag. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I mean, most of the time, I think a slash tag explicitly includes sites. So this would also right. solve the problem if you had, you know, you cr if I create a slash tag on tech news, I'm not going to include a site. I could say I'm not going to include a site that has interstitial ads. <laughs> I mean, I could I could do anything I want. But that's I so but nobody uses Blacko. <laughs> not not yet. But I mean, what's what is interesting is here. Blacko came out and they said, well, we're going to, you know, we're going to come out and try to compete in this space that everybody else has been crushed in. And what they've done phenomenally well in is convincing people subtly that Google has a spam problem and that they do their own pushing out. And they actually launched something called a spam clock. I think it's at thespamclock.com. And they said, this is the amount of spam that's coming along. They have convinced some people that they actually have a better search algorithm, even though they don't necessarily have a better search algorithm than they're Google. They're just using Google, aren't they? No, no, they're crawling the web and they're doing oh. their own searching as well. Oh. But they have, they're getting themselves counted with, you know, the big players because there's so few big players left. Um, I just did a thing the other day when the Academy Awards came out and I was kind of curious, well, who was getting you to the right place, you know, for the nominee list right at the very beginning. And it was like, okay, I'm going to compare Google and I'll compare Bing and, oh yeah, I'll compare Blacko. Because that's what I'm left with if I'm talking about... Google Bing, it drops off. It's quite a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> it drops off fast. It Google does. Bing Blacko. <laughs> Oh. It's kind of fun to say, actually. I do. Like, I'm, now I'm starting to like it. I'm going to blecko you. <laughs> <laughs> Not on the first date, Leo. No, no blecoing on the first date. Uh, yeah. Um, By the way, who was the best? Because I, I have to say, immediately, uh, I get up in the morning and I want to find out who the nominees are. And I Google Academy Award nominees, but there are a lot of articles that don't have a list. and So it, it, wasn't, was, it wasn't easy. Uh, I found it was a pretty close tie between Bing and Google. Um, both of them, and then I looked within, say, 15 minutes of them coming out. Both of them had their news boxes at the top. Ah. So there were lots of news articles about it. Right. But I was thinking, I just want to find the list. Right. And, and Google lifted at number one, the Oscar website, its homepage. You went to there, and the list was right at the top. Black, um, Bing listed the actual nominees page at the Oscar site. So you kind of want to give them an edge, except that page was exactly the same as the home page. Um, Blacko, which of course has gotten some praise in various places, um, was listing a page that was 404 on the Oscar site. Ooh. Mm. Ooh. So that was a failure. And, you know, they're going to have to step it up to, to, to be fighting among those other players. Bad Blacko. Yeah, for, for news like that, I probably would have searched Twitter. For like something that happened, you know, that, that got announced in the last 10, 15 minutes, I probably would have just searched Twitter. Yeah, um, yes, there's social search jumping right up. Well, and in front. fact, it was Twitter that even alerted me to the fact that the nominees ah, were out. That's right, yeah, me too. Yeah, exactly, that's me right. too. I saw that and then I said, oh, let me get them. Mm -hmm. Yep. My mistake was going to Google at that point, apparently. I should have just read the tweets. <laughs> I think the tweet that I saw actually had a link, so I didn't actually even That's search Twitter. That's what happened to me, too. I, yeah. yeah, I mean, I, once in a while, I'll go to search.twitter.com, especially if there's, like, a reality show on the, airing on the East Coast, and I just want to know the winner, that kind of thing. Um, so but, now I can just blame the curation. By the way, and I'll, I'll make this my uh, tool of the week in a little bit. Matt, actually, there's a Chrome extension that Matt mentions in his blog post so that you can report. And I think this is probably the best solution to this is let users say, hey, I found a site, but it really sure wasn't what I was looking for, or sure wasn't the information I needed. And you can now use it. There's a Chrome extension you can use to, uh, to tell are, are, to tell. Are the that. reports public? I want the reports to be public. Ah. Uh, yeah. I Let's doubt that they discussed. are, but I would love that. Yeah, I don't think they are. Mm -mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I would love to see a third party set up something like that, uh, where, you know, the community can post, can post, Bad search results and have it be public so that other people can can also is see. It, is it something but, like the Academy Francaise preserving the purity of the French language by deciding? I mean, I sometimes feel like a little bit. This is a little bit like old media saying, "Well, that's not good." They hired a five dollar writer to write a silly article about something. Well, it's. I, I think if you go back again to what Gina was saying about 
what Lifehacker was doing or what things other uh, sites may do. It's not, I think, that demand media is necessarily or any uh, some of the content farms have done something wrong. It's that most of these other publications existed because they're covering that area. Right. You know, they didn't say, "Ah, oh, I know. Let's go figure out." Um, it started from their own interest as opposed yeah, there, to there what the... Interest, there was some reason it was an area that they actually had people dedicated to do. And then you've got other players coming in saying, hey, instead of figuring out you know, what particular area we ought to cover on and specialize in and perhaps provide exceptional coverage in, let's cover everything anybody's interested in that, that is most likely to make money and let's pay as little as possible to the people to create that content. Which is, a clever, which is a clever business model, but it kind of rubs you the wrong way, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it me the That's wrong the way. difference. Yeah, and then there's the whole the whole separate issue of just driving down wages for writers, which as a writer myself, I'm not exactly in love with. Um, yeah. Well, that's we, what I mean. Have, yeah, we, we've been having this argument on uh, the CMO site with a bunch of people defending it, and my coming out and saying, "Look, you're just better off working at Starbucks. <laughs> uh, write your own blog in your spare and you'll, time, and you'll feel better Starbucks. better about yourself at the end of the day too. And you'll have like yes. health insurance and stuff." <laughs> um, <laughs> And I finally had to come out and say, look, I'm not being metaphorical here. I mean I'm it. Being literally. <laughs> Go to work. Get, you know. If you, hey, do you get free Trenti lattes if you work at Starbucks? Because I might do that. The Trenti latte is so big, you have to take a Starbucks break in the middle of drinking it because you don't have enough energy. <laughs> Appar no, apparently. <laughs> you're not far off. Apparently, 30 ounces is actually bigger than the capacity of the human stomach. So you really couldn't or wouldn't want to drink it all at once. It, you'd erp up. <laughs> and, and who says you don't learn something on This Week in Google? Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a break. I do want to talk a little bit about, the, uh, you know, a, a little story that broke uh, the day after we did Twig last week. Eric Schmidt steps down. Uh, whoops. I guess we should have led with that. Talk about burying Step the lead. Up, Steps up. Step up. He steps up. <laughs> Up he was out. elevated. He was elevated out of here. <laughs> he was on the escalator. Said, yeah, he was elevated right out of the building. Right out of the building. <laughs> uh, and, and I do want to talk about interstitial ads, actually, now that you brought it up, Gina, because TechCrunch, actually, Mike Arrington posted a very interesting uh, article on TechCrunch yesterday apologizing for the ads on his site. Hmm. 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 We'll dig deep into that in just a little bit. Before we go much further, though, I would like to say hello Hello to my good friends at Ford, the makers of the fine Ford Focus Electric, my next car. It's going to come out in uh, 2012. But yes, I will be replacing my lovely Ford Mustang, which I deeply love, with the uh, Ford Focus. First of all, because I want to be a good citizen and I like the electric, but also it's, you know, they've upgraded the Ford Sync, which I have, to the now the new My Ford Touch now understands 10,000 commands. Of course, it's true hands-free dialing. Call Gina Trapani on her cell and boom, it does it. I, it's, it's, it's playing the music you want or the podcast you want. Play this week in Google, the episode 78. It does it. You know, it works with your iPod, your iPhone, your Zoom, your, uh, all, the, all the different devices. In fact, if you've got a, a, um, an Android phone, some of the Android phones like my, the Droid X, it will read you your text messages as they come in in a lovely female voice. Um, it's just it's just fantastic. Now they've got Pandora and Stitcher, um, it, so that you don't you know you can listen to the radio you want. With Stitcher, you can listen to us. You just queue up a bunch of uh, twigs. The Ford Focus Electric for 2012 has lithium ion batteries, very high capacity. You can charge it from your standard 120 volt outlet, but they also will. They're they're going with the the folks at, uh, at Best Buy. The Geek Squad will come in and install a 240 volt outlet. I'm not kidding. In your house for three hour charging. I can't wait. It is a beautiful vehicle. You know, you want to see the inside of it. Go to uh, focuselectricpower.com. Uh, Focus, they're not a nonprofit, sorry. Focuselectricpower.com. And you can learn more about this amazing vehicle. It is just so beautiful. I saw it at uh, <coughs> Blog World and then again at CES. By the way, John C. Dvorak and Paul Therott are going to test drive it next month in Madrid. And we're going to get a report from them doing that. But you can find out more. It's almost like it's like a virtual test drive. There's going to be an iPhone app, an Android app that lets you char <laughs> check, check your battery levels and, and tell it to charge during uh, off-peak hours, things like that. Complete control. Just so slick. And very affordable. FocusElectricPower.com. Thank you, Ford, for supporting this week in Google. Now, that's an interstitial ad. I mean, that's a, that's traditional uh, broadcast ad. 
But we were just saying how much we hate that when a website, before, and the thing is, it's before you even get to the site, you have to, you have to look at an ad like this. <laughs> TechCrunch will load in just a few seconds. Yeah. And actually, this is Mike Arrington writing, real blogs don't have interstitial ads. He said, I've fought this for years. Apparently, AOL is putting these ads on TechCrunch. Um, they got to pay for buying it some way. Yeah. Mike, <laughs> talk. Mike is, you know, I'm convinced Mike has a strategy to get out of <laughs> with you. AOL. I was going to say, I would love to have been in on the meetings that happened after this post because I, I have been on in, in on meetings like this at Gawker, which is a much, much smaller company than AOL, and they are never pretty. So I would have loved to have seen uh, the AOL folks, sales team's faces after he posted this. Although I give Arrington a lot of credit for... for hey, for he, he's manly. I mean, first he goes after Josh Topolsky, the Engadget blog, and AOL, probably the most pro most profitable AOL property, uh, and calls them all sorts of names. Wrongly, by the way. But, you know, I'll defend Joshua to, to my dying day. I think Engadget's great, and I, and I think they do a great job. But now he's going after the ad department. Now you're in trouble, Mike. <laughs> I think it's pretty entertaining. I don't really give him a lot of credit. He took their money, and now he doesn't want to work for them anymore. Yeah, I think it's pretty obvious. He says, whoever did it... <laughs> I'm going to try to stop it, which will probably involve six hours of eternal meetings and at least one PowerPoint deck. So at least you know it's going to cause me a lot more pain than it's causing you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess I've, I've just, I've written a few of these, like, we, we really screwed up with our ads on Lifehacker myself. And whenever it happens, it's always this very traumatic experience. Although I think Mike is a lot more, uh, he just has a kind of temperament that's a lot better for this oh, kind of stuff. So. I'd be honest with you. I, I yeah, I'm just projecting. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be in that meeting uh, with Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, and then there's always there's always the question of how much AOL is kind of aware of this and sanctions it as a way to build traffic. Oh yeah, maybe uh, you know, uh, I've seen that happen in radio. It happens all the time. I remember Don Imus used to work with a guy named Pete Franklin. Franklin was in in the uh, Imus was in the morning. Franklin was the afternoon. It was I think it's on WNBC in New York, and they had a quote feud. It was I'm sure it was all play. At one point, Franklin steals into Imus's studio and takes the microphone. <laughs> and Imus comes in the morning. There's no microphone. He actually did the did the show by phone. Now you got to figure WNBC. There's another microphone. It's got. It's all shtick, yeah. right? It's all yeah. shtick. I think it's just. It's probably just shtick here. But I think it's fascinating. All right, let's talk about Eric Schmidt because really we should have led with that uh, Thursday uh, during the Google earnings call. Kind of a surprise. Larry Page, <laughs> Serg Sergey Brin, and uh, and um, Eric Schmidt got on the phone and. Eric says, you know, April 4th, I am out of here. Actually, no, what is he? He's the executive director. Executive chairman. Chairman. Executive like chairman. That. Yeah. Which is a, that's a executive made up, something. That's a made up title, I think. Well, it's hard to say. Um, according to the reports I've seen, he's going to be responsible for a lot of external relations and partnerships um, and dealing with government, which is a lot of what CEOs traditionally do. Well, yeah. In so fact, uh, he was off to do that right, right after the announcement, right? It's very strange to say that he's not going to be to say that Larry Page is going to be the CEO now, but Eric Schmidt's going to be dealing with all these external relations is like saying that someone's going to be a cook now, but someone else is going to prepare the food. I mean, yeah. in, in other companies, external relations is a huge part of the CEO's job. So it's a very interesting development. And they've got here. Sergey Brin to be the product guy. This is kind of how Google used to be before Eric Schmidt. Larry was the kind of the executive, right? I mean, I, I, that's what I seem to remember. Ten he years He was CEO ago. before. He was CEO, and uh, so this is just taking back his old job. Um, it did seem like very friendly, but then we're seeing all sorts of rumors. Like, this is from the New York Post. Probably consider the source. <laughs> uh, Google honcho Eric Schmidt, who announced his plan to hand over control of the tech giant last week, is eyeballing a career in TV. Page six learns, and I'd read you the rest of the story, but there's some sort of interstitial ad but covering an interstitial it up. Ad. <laughs> It's lovely. Listen, I'm from New York. You 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 don't you don't read the post. Let's not read the post. All right. You don't believe <laughs> that. Believe the post. But there have been other reports of the TV show, which is just weird. I mean, I just I think I've said on the show before. Schmidt always kind of put me off. Hey, so this is I'm a face happy. made for TV. Don't you want to? Don't you want to <laughs> just tune right in and see uh, what old yeah, potato right. what old potato you're, head has to say? <laughs> you're not right. You're not right. <laughs> um. So I have, I have three theories as to what's going on here. One of them, theory one, is from the guy who usually sits to the right here. Uh, I think that was where I read it, which is that this has been foreordained from the beginning. Ah. Um, Ten years I ago, think, they made a deal. 
that this would it happen. Wasn't really, yeah, it wasn't really so much of a deal. It was just kind of the idea that, I think it was Jeff who wrote this, that Eric was always kind of the regent who would rule until the true heir to the throne oh, that's interesting. grew up. Mm-hmm. Um, that's interesting. My second theory, which is mine and by me, is that this is a man who's 55 years old. He has, I mean... How does he who, survive? How does he get up in the morning? No, 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 no. He's got $100 million just recently. <laughs> yeah. but, you know. Google, Google is not his first career For success. crying out loud, he's got his AARP card. Put him to bed. Give him some soup. I, I'm just going to keep talking seriously here while you guys just... I'm 54. That's all I'm saying. I'm saying this is, I'm saying this is just... This is not his first career triumph. Right. He probably just right. wants to do something else. Former CEO at Novell. And was successful there. Yeah. Former executive at Sun was successful there. Right. He's, um, if you read his Wikipedia article, apparently he wrote it in a handy little Unix utility, too, in between. Yeah. <laughs> he, 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 he was integral in pushing Microsoft off its perch. Anybody remember Microsoft? They used to be a big company. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a guy who probably wants to go do something else. So but it, it's interesting. Google offered this uh, bonus for him, $100 ten, ten, million award if he sticks around for another six years. Oh, that's wait a minute! I didn't know there was a contingent. So, that's, oh yeah, I thought he just got the money. No, he's oh. got to stick around. This is yeah. what uh, this Reuters story is saying. Well, that's interesting. Um, he <laughs> Schmidt said he expected to spend another ten years at the company, uh, and this hundred million dollar award uh, he would have. To, it's an equity award, and he and to get it, he'd have guy, to stick around for six. Can I just point so, out Schmidt the guy's worth like, more like, than four so billion yeah. dollars? <laughs> A hundred million in cigarette so money. hundred million isn't even. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> it's like not even. What is? It's not nothing. It's still okay. That just, to the that just idea makes me sad. I'm just gonna. Idea. I'm just gonna leave now. I can't. I think he. <laughs> no, I think all no, of this like is disinformation. A... You know what I think is gonna happen? In six months, he's gonna be the CEO at Apple. You watch. You mark my words. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> that would be well. a trip. <laughs> Why wow. not? Isn't that what he and Steve Jobs are talking about? When they had that little coffee clutch. Oh, the, the coffee clutch. Yeah. Interesting. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. Remember Steve was overheard saying, well, they're all going to find out eventually anyway? Actually, mm. what they were talking about was, did you hear that they have this train day latte? It's huge. <laughs> it's, just, it's, just like it's larger than the capacity of the human stomach. Um, they I were planning correct, to take but... over the world with near-field communications, right? <laughs> the $100 million equity award vests over four years. So vests. Not so. Oh, it vests. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. That's a that's that's not unusual to have that kind of a structure. Yeah. You don't just give somebody something you expect something in return. So we didn't hear we didn't hear Mitch's third theory. All right. What's your third yeah. theory, Mitch? Oh, the third theory is that the timing is good. In fact, and you know, Danny has written about this at length. Google's been kind of faltering a bit. Um, you know, after Google Wave and after Google Buzz and all these other things that they've tried and failed to get into the market. It's a it's a good time for changing the guard. Yeah. Um but I think that's kind of lower down than the other two things. I think he's a little injured by this past year of kind of missteps and miscues, weird things that he said about, you know, the creep, creeper, creepy line, go right up to the creepy line, but not across yeah. it. Things like that yeah. can't have helped his reputation with Larry and Sergey. Of course, Larry has said a few stupid things, too. Like, we want to be your brain. <laughs> yes. That's a long time ago. So he doesn't but say yeah. that anymore? Well, he hasn't. I mean... Uh, he hasn't spoken of of the three of them. He's spoken the least. Ah, interesting. It, recently, and um, that's been kind of my theory is the both the timing and you know Eric just kind of being sick of it. I mean, he he has had to be the public face now for ten years. Yeah. This past year has not been a happy time for him. In that, you know, he says something, and sometimes misinterpreted. It has been, yeah. Sometimes it has been taken out of context. Right. Sometimes. It's like, you just shouldn't have said that because it sounds dumb no matter how you say it. Um, at other times, but maybe that's like, a sign of his fatigue. Maybe that's a sign of he's yeah. kind of letting his guard down so he doesn't, he doesn't care as much anymore. And I thought Ken Aletta had a piece. You know, he had spent a lot of time there to write his book on Google, and mm-hmm. he was in contact with someone who said that that seemed to be the case, that Eric was feeling kind of down and tired and, you know, thought he could get re-energized and really couldn't do it. So it just seemed like a good time to kind of check out and bring somebody in fresh even though larry isn't necessarily fresh but at least if larry has to start stepping up into the ceo space now and he goes on to some show the first thing they're going to not they're going to ask him isn't so you said this 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 did you really mean all that he kind of loses some of that baggage the things people are going to start asking him is so you're the new ceo what are you going to be doing or what's going forward with google and it kind of changes the um the conversation i think a bit is it a okay so the stock market 
uh, reacted to Steve Jobs stepping down by by killing Apple's stock price significantly. They reacted to Eric Schmidt stepping up by uh, bumping the, the Google stock price significantly. Is the stock market right? Is this good for Google? <laughs> stock market's never I, wrong. Yeah, I, I find it difficult it's to say anything about stock markets because I usually find most investors seem to be idiots that don't understand anything about the companies that they buy. Oh, yeah. And I... You know, it's hard for me to tell you whether this is good or bad for Google because you know what it tells you even though, though is I what so the much time watch, there's so many pieces to them. Right, it tells you what the conventional wisdom is, which is that Steve Jobs is integral to the success of Apple, and I think that that's actually probably true, and that yeah. Eric Schmidt is far from integral and for, per, perhaps even a hindrance to the success of Google. Is that true? I think that's that's very well said. I'm you know if if Eric Schmidt were to leave Google tomorrow, if he had said I'm quitting, goodbye. I, I've just, you know, I want to take that job. New York Post is right. <laughs> you know, I, have this TV, I have this TV job. Oprah, you know, Oprah's Google, calling. Google, Google would not, I think, noticeably have a problem. You know, maybe Larry and Sergey might decide they need to have another person to kind of keep them focused, which seems to be the main thing that he's done based right. on reports is say, well, hey, Larry, Sergey, look over here again. That was and his then, tweet. But, that was his tweet. Right. Is adult supervision no longer necessary? But, you know, to where Steve Jobs really comes across as this visionary genius who really puts a lot of himself in product. Is that, is that, is that, is that who Larry Page is? Is that who Sergey Brin is? Uh, is there somebody at Google who is an analog to that? I mean, I remember, I've taught, you know, in the early days, 10 years ago before Eric... I remember, you know, talking with Larry and Sergey when they, it was a smaller company. They were much more available, and really having great conversations with Sergey about the search results. And he was, I mean, they're really into the technology. In in some no, ways, I, I think they I are think visionaries. What, I think what Google, it's hard to say. Um, I think what Google has instead of that is this belief in testing and mm. analytics. So rather than Steve Jobs perhaps having an intuition. And thinking, I am so right that I'm going to do this and I will bring people into a new space. I think Google tends to launch a product and then watch what people do and then reshape it based on that kind of feedback to decide and, and do a lot of testing before they, they do it. So, you know, th their muse is analytics, I suppose, in some ways. But yeah, it's it's hard to say. I, but I can't, I can't recall many stories where it's come out that, wow, Larry really shaped it this way, or Sergey really shaped it that way, or it was Eric's vision that made this sort of thing happen. On a product That's level, a occasionally you have individual product people who seem to have a vision. Wave was an example of that. You had a team that seemed to have a vision of what it was supposed to be, and it really was something different that wasn't out there. Um, you know, you have individual products in that way, but not uh, not like a, an, an Uber product controller, I would say. Well, let's not forget what Eric said was the justification for this, that they had three people participating in every decision and that made the company not nimble and agile enough. So therefore, they had to have a division of labor. Right. That it was, in fact, uh, there were too many people. Yeah. Although then they, then they said, we're still going to have three people. So it's like... <laughs> <laughs> Who's the third? <laughs> Who's the Nothing third now? We're all still hanging out and boo buddies and, you know. Who's the third? Well, Eric... Oh, so <laughs> yeah, I mean, he was, you know, when the, one of the things he said was, well, we're still all working together. We're still going to be making these decisions and whatnot. So, I mean, it uh, that felt more like an excuse to me than anything. But underneath it, I thought the thing that perhaps was more notable was that previously Larry was president of technology, if I remember correctly, and Sergey was president products, or they might have been flip flopped. I, I'll search for it in a second. But with this change, those those titles went away. So Eric's been stepping up into this new thing that he's doing, which seems to be, I'm going to go out and I'm going to get a glad hand and be nice to all the business people I need to make the deals with, but I don't necessarily have to go on CNBC anymore. Whew. Oh, that's interesting, and, yeah. And, and Larry seemed to be like, all right, I'm going to be doing that role going forward. Um, get it. You don't want to be dealing with it. I'll pick that up. And I'm also going to take a firm hand on all of our existing products. And Sergey, your job now is blue sky. You are supposed to be figuring out 
where the hell our startup culture went and how do we start having products internally that are emerging instead of all these products now that we're either having to build buy or we're seeing people used to work for Google go off and build them outside of Google because they said he's in part of strategic products and everything else so to me that was the the main restructuring I thought that was going on with Google it almost felt like they're saying we're gonna we're gonna build the garage again at one point and Sergey is gonna take control of that and and Larry will make sure that the house is staying in order that we're already living in Maybe. Well, that sounds, you know, business as usual. I just, I feel like Eric's not going to be around that long. I mean, I think they made a lot of effort to imply that, to mm. reassure people. I just feel like, you know, TV show or not, I don't think he's going to be around that much longer. Yeah, that $100 million bonus points to, you know, you give, <laughs> you, you give somebody, it, it points to the idea that he was, he, he had a foot out the door and they want to drag him back in. That, that, that he was ready to leave. Yeah. Well, the hundred, the hundred million to me says, let's just give him this thing, and we'll put this vesting in there. Maybe that'll make some of the investor things that believe that he's going to stick what I around. I feel like all this, even, is a, is even though it's nothing money to him, right? right. It's well, it, it's it sounds like it, you know Google wants him to stick around, right? And that they're just giving him incentive to do so. So it makes it sound like it's, it was maybe more his decisions just to, to step away, yeah. or maybe that he does have a foot out the door. He has been thinking about that. Just it seems like a symbolic move, like, hey, we really want you to stick around, and this is why the vesting is built in. It's very common for companies to do this, even small startups. Vesting equity over time is a way to hold yeah, on to talent. You, don't, you never give people the, the 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 award all at once, right? If you want them to stick around, so it wasn't. Right. In other words, it's not a goodbye gift; it's a stick around gift. It's a we want you to stick around gift, yeah. which I think is a is an interesting interesting move, public move by Google, you know, gesture. All right, uh, let's see here. What else? Um, actually, I'll tell you what, let's take a break because there is a lot more to talk about. Uh, we're running short of time. We've got a great panel here, Gina Trapani from smarterware.org and lifehacker.com and Think Up. Think Up. And I'm going to, and a, a, we'll talk about it later. A cool, okay. new, a cool new thing. Cool. A cool new thing. Yeah. Yeah. And also with us, Danny Sullivan of SearchEngineLand.com, a guy who's been watching search engines for as long as there have been search engines. Is that about right? When did you start doing that? Uh, 96. Oh, good Lord. Yeah, Back in the walk, Alta Vista days. We, That's pre-Google. We, we walked through the snow and mailed our queries to Alta Vista. <laughs> it was. It was Alta Vista. It was Yahoo. Google wasn't there in 96. No, it Northern was... Northern Lights? <laughs> Northern no. Lights. Nobody that's alive now was alive then. It's It's... Amazing, actually. So, yeah. <laughs> what an interesting beat to cover something that is 100% changed. Totally upended. It's I mean, fun. Yeah. Well, that's why, that's <laughs> I, why I like it. I come to work one day and say, oh, there's not going to be anything more no. going on. It's all, it's all done. But that's then, why I love it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Also with us, uh, Mitch Wagner, a, a fellow Hello, San everyone. Diegan from the CMO site. Yes. Dot com. Glad to have all three of you on today and we'll continue on in just a moment and I'll do if if I'll tell you what normally Jeff who's not here Jeff's at Davos and uh, the Germans wouldn't allow him to speak because they knew it was a Google show so they've uh, they've blurred his voice but Germany <laughs> Germany I'm in Germany but uh, but he normally does a number of the week so I'm gonna give Mitch and uh, and Danny a chance you have a few minutes while I do this ad and then we'll get to the pick and the number until to come up with a number that you think is a, is a it reflects something a trend in the news this week. Number number. I'll let you search while I talk a little bit about Hover. dot com domain registration done right. I was so happy when Hover came along. <laughs> Actually, Hover is a, is is not something new. You remember Domains Direct? They've been doing this for a long time. Part of Two Cows. They they've renamed and rebranded because they realized there was something missing in the in the domain registrars out there. They all looked like a carnival site you know they all look like you know <laughs> dancing chickens and 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 18 clicks before you could even buy something and hover said you know it really should be easy it's not a complicated thing so they they've created if you go to twig.cover.com you'll see how clean simple and easy it is you couldn't get simpler than this search for a domain transfer a domain uh, they don't do hosting uh so they're not going to upsell you on their hosting they do they do just a few things you can either have uh, your domain forwarded, which is what most people think of as domain hosting. You know, I have leoville.com. The registrar doesn't host it. I have professional hosting service. You, they'll also uh, do email forwarding for you. 
So you can have a domain registered with them. And this is a good idea. Even if you're not going to put up a website, get your own domain, a family name or... It's such a great thing because then with the forwarding, you can use Gmail or Hotmail, whatever the heck you like, or your ISP's mail, but, you're, but, but you can change around your, your, your email address never changes. It's always, you know, leo at leoville.com and has been for 20 years. So that's a, that's a, if nothing else, a good reason to do this. You can have custom URLs as well. Um, and it's very affordable. Plus, there's not the upsell. For instance, you know, the, those other guys, will they'll sell you privacy. They say, well, you've got the domain, but you don't want anybody to know where you are. So do, would you like to buy domain privacy? It's, whoops, I went to the wrong site. It's free on Hover.com. It's included. It's automatic domain. Of course you don't want anybody to know your information. Go to twig.hover.com. You'll save 10% off your new domain with the Twig offer code. 25, if you've got a bunch of domains to transfer, I wish I'd done this. I thought, oh, I'll do it by hand. What, a, what an idiot. If you have a bunch of domains to transfer, just spend the $25, and they'll transfer them all, which is really great. Transfers are free. They will charge you $10 for the domain transfer, which is applied to your next year of registry. So, in effect, you're going to get an extra year of registry for $10 when you transfer your name over. That's a good deal. Twig.hover.com. Use the offer code. Twig, and you'll save another 10% on top of that. We thank them for their support. Let's start with the, well, I, you know, can we do a quick, we'll do a quick news rundown because there's so many other stories. I, I almost hate to uh, leave any of these out, but we're running out of time. Um, Android 3 platform preview and SDK tools. Have you looked at this, Gina? Have you, I know you're a developer. I haven't had a chance to install the new SDK yet, but Lifehacker just posted um, a screenshot tour of what's in the SDK now. So this is a, a, a preview of Android 3.0, which is Honeycomb. Uh, no due date yet. It's a preview, so it's still unstable. Things might change. But it's uh, Android built specifically for larger screens, so tablets, essentially. Uh, so if you hit Lifehacker right now and click on some of those images, you can see that, that there's a new theme. I think they described it as a holographic theme. Yeah. It looks really Look pretty. Look how 3D it, it looks. Yeah, yeah, it looks really pretty and optimized for big screens, tablet screens, um, but we'll also be running on the on the smaller handsets. So I'm super, super excited. So we'll excited get this, this on we'll get this on our Android phones. Yeah, I mean, it, it, they're not forking Android in the sense that there will be a tablet Android and then a handset Android. Like Honeycomb will be will be for all res, you know screen resolutions and sizes. Okay. Yeah, so eventually when it does roll out, everyone will, will get it. There'll just be support for larger screen re screen resolutions. So it's looking it's looking really, really good. And, and uh, you know, I, I think there's going to be some serious honeycomb, hot honeycomb action at Google I.O., uh, which will be in, I, I think it's in May, but registration opens up in February. And we're we're going to do that. We're gonna, we, uh, you, you suggested, and I think we will do this. You're going to be there, I know. I will uh, be there if I can get registered in time because registrations go fast. But Register yeah, if, if, so we'll get, we want to do the show from there. I'm sure we can get some help from uh, uh, somebody at Google. Hint, hint. Uh, yeah, I'm, I bet we could probably get because I'd love to do the show from there. We, you know, we covered it. We covered the, they, they had last year. They had two keynotes, and um, and with the first one was good, but the second one was where all the juice was, and we we need to cover both of those and then do a show from there. So uh, we'll 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 do that in May. That'll be awesome. That'll now, be awesome. But I, I bet there'll be a lot of honeycomb. Uh, oh yeah going on oh, at, at yeah. I.O. I'm looking at the about. Lifehacker article, and, you know, you, 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 all the attention goes to the eye candy. Yes. But there's some things that is more than eye candy. For instance, this is called the action bar. In if every, you click on that image, you can enlarge it. Okay, we'll get more details here. Yeah. So this is in every application. There's some, some context-sensitive uh, buttons here. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, this is a complete redesign. Look, there's the trash. I mean... So and, yes, and you click totally this different. and stuff. This is refresh. So this will be consistent across the board, on all. It of looks them. that way. Yeah. It looks that way. The, in every what application, the Gmail app. Yeah, it looks like a Gmail app. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, a tablet optimized. A tablet optimized Gmail. So there's two bars. They, they say the email. There's a, a a new message button, a refresh button at the top. When you select a message, the action bar changes to display a move to folder button. So in other words, this bar here is going to be context sensitive the second row down here depending on what you're up to which is huge right because normally when you're developing an android app and i've learned this firsthand the last couple of weeks you have to bury all this functionality in the menu right so you're, you're asking users to tap the menu it's hard to uh, find button, too they don't know it's hard to find right so if you have this constant context sensitive <laughs> menu bar, which a lot of apps build in, you know, Seismic builds in, a lot of the good apps actually build one in, but it'd be nice to, you know, have it, 
you know, as part part of the development process, like, hey, you're going to have this menu bar and buttons are going to change, you know, depending on your context. So I'm excited about that. The keyboard looks good. Copy and paste looks good. This is cool. It's, yeah, it's good, good, good stuff. Yeah, it's a, it's a much, it looks like a much larger, this would be great on a tablet, that big keyboard. Yep. And the copy and paste is already in gingerbread. This is that new, uh, those new sliders. You haven't seen that on your Nexus One, but we have that on the Nexus S. Aww. Oh, twisted mm -hmm. nicely. Now, we, twisted had heard, nice. we had heard a rumor that you'd have to have a dual core processor, but now they're saying, no, 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 that's just what we'd, we'd like you to have, but it's not required. Right? Mm, yes. Because otherwise, that would leave every phone in the market out. <laughs> <laughs> right. That pretty much be, that wouldn't be good. Although, the fact that it they haven't... on imaginary phones. <laughs> the fact that they uh, haven't updated the Nexus 1 to gingerbread is a little concerning. Like, maybe they feel like, hey, once it's a year old, you got what you got. Oh, I, this week I got a notification about an update, and it was Android 2.2.2 or 223. Yeah. And I just had that moment of like, yes, no. <laughs> but I don't know. They said the next couple of weeks back in early December, so I'm ha hanging in, hanging in there. They haven't said no. They haven't said no. They haven't said no. Uh, you can now port your home number or whatever to uh, Google Voice. I like that. $20. I don't like that, but uh, that's nice if you have a number you want to keep. And you want to use Google Voice. I think everybody should use Google Voice. Is there any negative to Google Voice? Uh, any of you guys uh, feel that would make anybody n want to stop before they port their main line to it? Well, you, you can't port your main line, only your mobile number. Oh. So if you have a landline, you can't move that over yet. Just your mobile um, numbers. And I actually ported my mobile number over. They let me test it out for the past six months. So I, I moved it over and I did a write-up yesterday about it. Um, probably the chief negative is... A couple people feel like sometimes the quality of Google Voice, because you're going through their network, doesn't hold up. I, I can't tell. I can't tell sometimes whether it's Google Voice or it's just AT&T or Verizon. <laughs> so if um, I port, Danny, if I port my iPhone phone number to Google Voice, does that mean all my calls now have to go through Google Voice? They'll be routed through that, yeah. Every if call. Somebody, if, if somebody hey. calls your number, it will go through Google Voice, and you'll be talking to the Google Voice network as it gets to your iPhone. Oh, that is a negative. If you, if you call out you can choose to use, if you will, your real number on the iPhone, or and then you just go pure AT&T, or you can use Google Voice. Um, so you do yes. have on outbound calls, you have the choice. It's only the when people call. But that's the case. When yeah. somebody calls my Google Voice number, they're calling me on Google Voice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. For, for, for the most part, I, I've loved it. I mean, okay. it, it's just the, the freedom, and it's my number. Plus, like, at one point, I had four different mobile phones I was testing. So I, it oh, was yeah. great that I could just, I, I felt like I could accessorize. Right. I'm going to go out rollerblading. I'm going to take the iPhone because it has the flip case. No, I'm going off here, and i got to walk around. I've got the Samsung Fascinate, and it's very light, <laughs> so it'll go in my pocket. <laughs> you know? Someday, I all of us will have to today. I'll take the Droid, too. Um, but it made it very easy. Easy to know that any phone I took, I would have my phone number right. go to it. That was wonderful. Although, you know, well, people are not carrying four different phones. No, no but it's like what I was talking about with the uh, email, having a, uh, a personal email address and then having it forward. It's the same idea. Ultimately, in the future, we should all have one phone number. Maybe we should just have one thing. And that if, if, t if an email gets sent to it, it's email. If it's a phone call, it's phone call. If it's text. Really, ultimately, shouldn't we just all have one number? That's right, it? I have I have I have yeah. two two items on my wish list for uh, Google Voice, and I'm hoping Google listens to this so they'll do it. Um, one of them is I think you actually need more than one number. You need different numbers for your different roles in life. Um, I want to give one number to my friends and family, and another number to people I work with. Um, that makes sense. So I mean, you know, I do I, that kind of because I use contact groups, so that when my wife calls, it says, "Hi, honey." Sorry, I missed you. Love you. And she, and, and she says, do you tell everybody who calls you and leaves a message that you love them? Because she doesn't really understand that. No, no, it's just for you. And then if a business associate calls, and there's different responses, and if it's a number I don't know, that's a third response. I'm going to call yeah, your Google voice number. I want to know what my message is later. Yeah, you know, you know where you stand yeah. in the ranking depending on what message. I don't know you. I don't want to talk to you. Am Leave I a friends message. or coworkers? Hmm. I've always wanted Darth Vader music as my theme song. Um, um, just, um, yep, um, just um, whenever I go in a room. Dun, um, dun, um, dun, dun, I thought Carmina dun. Burana would be good, maybe. Be. Oh, it's like you're calling Satan. The other thing I want from Google Voice is true, a true desktop VoIP app. Because right yes. now I patch it through to Gizmo or I patch it they through to Skype. Gizmo. And it's just like you know, rubber bands and duct tape. And 
They bought Gizmo and they took it off the market. Please do something yeah. with it. Yeah, that's terrible the way Google does that stuff. They yeah. buy it and they kill it for a couple of years before they bring it back. I, this is, by the way, Gina, if you call, uh, this is your ringtone. <laughs> Just teasing. Just this teasing. is acceptable. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Dark Fury on line four. <laughs> the seventh rider of the apocalypse. All right. Uh, let's. Okay. There, that's a good story. Uh, so no reason not to port. Go for it, man. Love Google Voice. Love Google Voice. Uh, Google buys a company called Say Now. This is to bolster their voice service. What is Say Now? What is Say Now? No idea. It, don't, don't look. Say <laughs> Now, Say Now. It's a song. Uh, it's, it's confusing. It seems to be something where you call celebrities and leave messages for them. And I pity then the they fool. Leave messages back or something like that. <laughs> it sounds like some sort of stalker enablement service. Just it made <laughs> hang, hang, hang around David Letterman's house. Yeah, you could call 50 Cent or Trisha Yearwood. GG, decisions, decisions. Or the Jonas Brothers. Fans call and leave a message, and the stars can then, quote, call back. Hmm. But see, now, obviously, they don't intend to apply. I mean, I think Google would say, well, instead of stars, what if this is you? Right? Celebrities could connect with their fans. No, this must be, they, they have no use for this. This must be, Dane Cook uses it. <laughs> <laughs> And if oh, you, I'm still there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I could call Dame Cook. Wow. Here's here's a Dame Cook. This is a call. Dame Cook. No, no, that's not Dame Cook. <laughs> I am live right now from my desk in LA. The word desk, I don't know why I'm like saying the word on my desk. I can't I get, get the Carmina Burana out, but it somehow... It be suited. my head down on a book that I'm pretending to read and drooling and... So, I'm at my workplace. No, I don't like that either. That sounds like a person that's about to go home and... Fuck. This is the end times, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so this is like voice publishing. This is like YouTube, yeah. but for voice. I think that's so kind of just, interesting. Yeah. I think that Google yeah. could do something with this. Not with yeah. Dane Cook, obviously. <laughs> yeah, um, that is interesting. What about, because they couldn't get group, Groupon, all the rumors are they're going to do a Groupon clone, or some sort of coupon thing. Oh, yeah, it's coming. Here it they're going to do it. People are getting people are finding Google coupons and getting that confused with Google Groupons, which aren't aren't Google Groupons. They'll be called Google Offers. They're coupons um, from Google. Isn't that it has coupons? a nice ring to it, doesn't it? That Google coupons. Groupons. Groupons. But uh, coupon. That would confuse the <laughs> yeah. hell out of everybody. <laughs> that would be great. Um, but yeah, they're gonna do it. And man, it's like okay, if you don't want our six billion dollars, we'll sink it into something else. So it's called Google Offers. It looks and operates like Groupon or Living Social. You get an email with a local deal of the day. Mm -hmm. You could buy it. It's it's the same business. I guess there's no <laughs> who's, did, who's did to say Google's gonna be able social? to execute. Did, that? Last week, what at Living Social they were selling um, those uh, Amazon gift cards, ten dollars for a twenty dollar right. card. Right. right. That's, well, that's I mean, huge. Google was going to put $6 billion into Groupon. I suppose that that could give them a lot of money. This to is the, the cost, the true cost of that. Somebody wrote an article, and I would like to give them credit, but I can't. But the real cost of this is Salesforce on the ground. Yeah. Because both these companies so, uh, have to put a uh, you know, you're, it's, it's aggressively local. You've got to have a salesperson in every single market, at least. So this is a huge cost. You're talking thousands of new employees. Yeah, and Google has never had a strength as a hands-on people-to-people company. Oh, yeah. Maybe That's they could famous. do the, some sort of Python sales force. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the oatmeal state of the web? <laughs> yes. Um, so I know we're, we're, Love I, it. But their, their Groupon. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> cartoon <laughs> where it says that Groupon got young people excited about, about coupons again. It was just hilarious. It was my, yeah. one of my favorite parts of that, that right. whole comic. Pulling it up right now. Let me. Uh, <laughs> this is the state of the web right now. If you go to, oh, let's see. Uh, oh, I got to find the link. The, the oatmeal.com slash comics. Slash state underscore web underscore winter. If you just Google the, the oatmeal state of the web, you'll I find did, it. and I unfortunately I got. Uh, I blackoed it, and it didn't find. I got demand. <laughs> I got, Blacko gave me demand media. Yeah. Oh. It, 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 it gave me the Oscar results. Strangely, well, yes. well, speaking by the way, Blacko has created a. Um, they have created a slash tag to block that out. Oh, good. State of the web. Oh, here we are. Here Thanks it is. Book. The oatmeal. 
State of the so, web. Facebook is now used by one in 13 people on Earth. Lord Zuckerbeast demands more. <laughs> That's good. I like that. He's got moobs. <laughs> oh, he's got something. I don't know what that is. It looks like a happy face. looks like a happy face. Every once in a while, Facebook makes all 500 million of these people switch to a new layout. <gasps> oh, my God. This new layout's an outrage. I can't believe it. 15 minutes, minutes later. Oh, hey, you're using the new Facebook layout. How do you like it? <laughs> huh? Verizon plus iPhone. There goes the one reason anyone ever signed up for AT&T. Google. Oh, this is the, this it. when I saw this one, Gina. I oh, cried for you. Just that one. I cried yeah, for you. When, uh, Yahoo uh -huh. almost buries delicious, but apparently the internet is still using it. Dear Yahoo, if you sell delicious, please sell it to someone who won't build a competing service within the same company. <laughs> Yahoo, bookmarks. Yahoo bookmarks. Apple launches Ping, a social networking and music recommendation service, which subsequently takes over the music industry. <laughs> just kidding. No one's using that crap. <laughs> he, he, by the way, made this uh, Tumblr goes down page for Tumblr. I love that. The it's a great, yes. great graphic. And, and they used it. Listen to the audio. Look this up because it's a really cool. They image. used it. It's so cool. That's neat. Now, the finally, here we go. My favorite, though. Groupon manages to make young people excited about coupons. 1910 and 2010. Holy hamburgers, Martha! Buy one shack of ground beef and get a free aircraft carrier shaped cheese log. Sweet <laughs> Jesus, Bill. 2010 <laughs> plus. Holy swine juice, Chrissy. Get $200 worth of pork chop milkshakes for only $100. Jesus, coupon cap in Christ. The savings, so incredible. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. You use those things. You shouldn't mock Groupon users. <laughs> You oh, got no. you, you got a manicure for Manny Petty for twenty percent off. I, I'm not I'm not a big Groupon person. No? Although I did I did find myself ex very excited about getting double points at the grocery store last week, and that's when I realized that I am truly in my mid thirties. Like I'm I'm a grown up now. Or I'm excited about my club my next, club card. Next thing uh, you know, just, you'll I, be listening to talk radio. <laughs> I love the pork chop milkshakes though, because that just really encapsulates. It's like yeah. this thing that you it's absolutely do not want, want need. All right, let me sign up for Groupon. Let's see oh, pork boy. chop milkshakes. Mm. <laughs> we, can, we can get a Manny Petty together, Leo. Oh, and we'll get a let's see what now. today. $25 to for $50 worth of tea. It is. It's hipster at it Samovar. Hipster. It's hipsters. I went through a week's worth of Groupons that came to me, and, I, and it was just constantly eat, eat, work out, work out, eat, eat. Yeah. <laughs> and get your hair done. They're basically, that what they go I wouldn't is, have time for all those They say, what, what would Kevin Rose want right now? <laughs> And then they put that on there. Isn't there a lot of like hot air balloon rides and like paragliding, like like all those kind yeah. of things that sound really exciting, but yeah. you never sort of get your get your act together to do? How about a two night yeah. villa stay and breakfast for two at Sonoma Coast Villa and Spa and Bodega? A seven hundred ten value, yours for just three hundred fifteen. The fine print expires in one year. Limit one per person. Reservation requires subject to availability. Four D day cancellation. Those required to Do not taunt Happy Fun Ball. <laughs> 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 All right, let's see. We're doing this is supposedly rushing through the stories, not so fast. Uh, Mark Zuckerberg's Facebook page hacked. Weird. Uh, however, good news Facebook is now offering SSL. Uh, well, we'll soon offer SSL uh, throughout the site. This is in response to Fire Sheep. Finally. Finally. I thing. keep telling Mark not to use I am a sexy dude as the as password. <laughs> it just leaves him all listen. <laughs> I'm Mark Zuckerberg and I'm a sexy dude. Dude. <laughs> All right, let's get to our uh, our tip, and I hope you guys, I gave you time, have come up with some numbers, and I have a fabulous new tool of the week. But first, Gina Trapani, your tip of the week, dear. Tip of the week. This is a really good one. I'm excited about this. New Gmail Labs feature, an unread icon, uh, unread message icon count. So if you go into your Gmail account, you go into Labs, you um, enable this new lab on your icon, uh, on the Gmail icon, it will show the number of unread messages in your inbox, which is awesome because it means you can pin the tab, say, in Chrome and only show the fave icon, but also know how many new messages you have. I've uh, th This feature has been in the Better Gmail Firefox extension, which, which I, I maintain. Yeah. yeah, which I which which I maintain, and, and it's really cool. And actually, a Gmail engineer emailed me and said, hey, what do you think should go in labs? And I said, look at my extension. I think all these things should go in labs. And that was a while ago, but it fi finally happened. So it's really cool that you don't have to add, you don't have to install any extra add-ons or extensions to get this. And it's just super useful to, not that I recommend monitoring your email box constantly, but it's a nice way to see how much mail you have without having to switch tabs or, or get any sort of toast or pop-up. This is good. You go every few days or weeks and look at what's in labs, because there's always new stuff, isn't there? There is always 
always do stuff. They tend to do a post on the official Gmail blog so about blog. new labs. So yeah, I just keep on top of the blog because Gmail is literally one of the things I spend most of my time in during the day. So that that's something that's uh. So that I've turned it on. So now this is going to appear where in the icon? In the in the fav icon in the tab. So. Oh, that's cool. So I could just kind of go to another tab, but then I will see how many messages I have managed to ignore. Right. In the. <laughs> so if you. Uh oh, it's loading. Yeah, you know how many tens of thousands that number yeah. is going to be. Are you counting, actually really going to stretch counting, the uh, counting, <laughs> counting, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. checking, counting, <laughs> counting. It's going. Eh, eh, I can't <laughs> lift it. That's too big a number. It's going to be wider than the fave icon. We're going to need more tabs. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Gina. For normal Gina. people who have less than 10,000 messages in their priority inbox, it's very, very... It's still counting. No judgment. No judgment. Mm, <laughs> Is it still counting? It's still, it's still counting. Still That's nuts. It, look, the spinner mm. even gave up. The spinner's like... <laughs> the spinner's like, I can't, I can't, I can't do this anymore. I can't go on. I'm... <laughs> <laughs> I need to get it's going to show up this. like there is no number that large. It's, just, no it's going to say Google. Say like a lot. It's going to say you have a Google messages in your Google inbox. All right. Well, all right. Well, that's good. No, that's a good tip. I like that. I like that. Uh, now, who who uh, who have among you, uh, the two of you, Danny and Mitch, do you, either of you, have you a number? Should I start with oh, Danny? Oh, oh, I have one. Oh, oh Mitch oh, has a number. Oh. He's going to get you off the hook, Danny. Yes, Mitch. Whew. The number is, I'll tell you how I got the number because I'm so cool. I Googled Facebook number. And oh. came up with a Time Magazine article that said Boy. mobile was going to be the number one priority. So then I went to the original Wall Street Journal article, which said 200 million is the number. Wow. 200 million is the number of people who access Facebook on mobile devices every day. Every day? Yes. Wow. Amazing. That's, and that is, is amazing. That's quite amazing. And the CTO, Brett Taylor, said that mobile is going to be the top priority uh, for Facebook development going forward. Um, and one of the things they're going to be doing is trying to move to HTML5 because right now they have to run seven different versions of the client. Ay, 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 caramba. Oof. Yeah. Wow. So I am very awesome for having 200 come up numbers, with that. that. The 200 million, that's a great number. Yes. And my tool of the week, I was looking around. I saw, I saw the <sighs> Android marketplace and I said, what is this to do dot text touch? <laughs> and it turns out for a mere $2... I can have Gina Trapani's first Android application. Yay! Hey. What Tap does it do? Tap the button. This log button? in a Dropbox. Yeah, oh, I got to log in in Dropbox. <laughs> so it saves the, it saves, this is from todo.txt, which I've always loved, which is a text-based to-do list. You could store it in Dropbox, and then it'll load it in here. We talked about it last week, but I just wanted to say, it's in the marketplace. Yay, Yay. Gina. Congratulations. Yay for Gina. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. Actually, it was an experiment. I wanted to test this hypothesis that no one buys apps on Android. So I offered, so if you go to the GitHub repository downloads area, you can download the app for free, but it's for $2 in the market. And if for your two bucks, you get auto updates and, and that kind of thing through the market. Hundred, not thousands, but hundreds of people have bought the app. So people buy stuff on Android, even though they don't probably don't buy as much uh, as many apps as they do on iOS. People do buy stuff in the market. So I'm really excited. I want to thank everyone who did buy the app. There's lots of really cool updates coming, offline use, home screen widget, location-based stuff. It's going to be really cool. And it's well uh, worth $2. I'm, I, I, you know, I don't care that I can get it for free. It was very easy. It's great. I'll log into my Dropbox and I'm going to have my uh, to-do list on here. Thank you. I'm so excited to have your name in my uh, Google checkout orders <laughs> inbox, Leo. Thank you. Did you see you. it? Do you see it? <laughs> I did see it. I did see it. I did. I saw it for just a couple minutes ago. So thank you. Yeah, I just bought it. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is our uh, This Week in Google for this week. Jeff Jarvis will be back next week, but I will not. I'm off uh, on Mac Mania 11, uh, where uh, Steve Wozniak and I will attempt to cross Cape Horn with little more than a green laser and a prayer. Uh, actually, we're going to go to Antarctica. It's going to be a lot of fun. I can't wait. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, well, we'll report back. Uh, we fact, are going to miss you. Well, I may be able to get on. We'll see. I, you know, there's some uh, there's some question about maybe I could somehow uh, get on. But we'll see. Take a vacation. Enjoy. 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 Off. <laughs> do what you got to do. Jeff you will be back. Saying? Jeff will be back next week. And uh, I thank, thank you uh, all for being here. Danny Sullivan is at Search Engine Land. Dot com. Obviously, you could tell from just listening to Danny, this is the place to go if you want definitive coverage of all of this stuff. Uh, I read it religiously every day. SearchEngineLand.com. Thank you for being here, Danny.
Thank you very much for having Appreciate me. Appreciate it. Mitch Wagner, it's also been great to have you. We finally got you on. I'm really pleased. Please don't be a stranger. We'll get you back soon. Great. I'd love to be on. Mitch is at the CMO site, S I T E dot com. Yes, we indeed. thank you for joining us. We do this show every Wednesday afternoon around about 4 o'clock Eastern, 1 p.m. Pacific time at live.twit.tv. And if you want to tune in and watch it live, we encourage you to do so because we've got a great chat room at irc.twit.tv, and you can watch and chat at us. But Someone you, said no adult supervision next week, Leo. No adult, <laughs> yes. I'm going to tweet that. No adult supervision needed. needed. I'm going away. I'm done here. I'm going to be the executive chairman I could be the Dang. executive twit. That's a good one. So bad, yeah. I like Chief Twit. I am the Chief Twit. Somebody sent me a note saying, "I don't know why you call yourself that. Don't you know what Twit means?" I said, "Yes, I know what Twit means. I've been calling myself that for six years." Uh, Better let's than see. being the assistant Twit. Yeah. Well, we got those out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you for being here. We appreciate it, and we will see you uh, next week on this thank week you. in Google. Bye, guys. Bye. 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 Thank you.